Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 8th March 2022. So actually every year we celebrate this March 8th as International Women's Day. So first of all, I wish you a very happy International Women's Day. So there is one article in our editorial page which mainly discuss about this International Women's Day. So we are going to discuss that in very great detail. So let's get started with our discussion with a quote and this quote it is by Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. So quote is confidence and hard work is the best medicine to kill the disease called failure. Yes, prelims it is very much near, right? And I hope you are doing well. So in this, in this time you need to develop confidence and you need to work hard. So this confidence and hard work that will be very much helpful to overcome or to kill the disease called failure, right? So please improve your confidence and try to work hard to clear this prelims. So I wish you a very all the best. So now let us see the first topic. This topic it is mainly talking about one case that is media one case. So we need to know what is this media one. So this media one, it is one TV channel of Malayalam language. So actually you know that Malayalam language, it is mainly used in Kerala. So this article, which is mainly talking about this media one case. So we need to understand what is this media one case and what are the powers of IB, that is information. Uh, so that is IB, okay, Ministry of IB. And uh, you need to know about what are the important content that can be prohibited right and you can talk about even fundamental rights here and you can talk about way forward so in detail we need to know about this media one case and this topic it is important from your polity point of view which mainly comes under gs paper 2 so now let us try to see what is the context here now kerala high court Okay, so now here Kerala High Court which mainly upheld the order of Union Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. Okay, so Ministry of Information Broadcasting which mainly came up with some order regarding this media one and it mainly cancelled the license of this media one TV channel and this case which mainly went to this uh, Kerala High Court and Kerala High Court upheld the order. So if you are talking about what is this case all about? So IB, INB, Information and Broadcasting Ministry, which mainly informed this media one news channel and it is mainly um, uh, cancelling the broadcast license. Okay, so Information Broadcasting Ministry informed this media one channel that its license had been cancelled. So why? Why? Because Home Ministry ordered, uh, Home Ministry came up with the order that denied security clearance to this channel. So first of all, Home Ministry which mainly denied security clearance for this Media One channel. So because of this INB Information Broadcasting Ministry informed this channel that so this license had been cancelled. So what happened this Media One channel which mainly approached High Court and it came up with a writ petition. So if you are talking about writs in our Indian constitution, Article 32 which mainly talks about writs. So we are having five important writs, right? So let me know those writs in the comment box. Don't forget about that. Right? So here media one channel which mainly went for this high court and it mainly came up with this writ petition. And in this context, Kerala High Court granted a stay allowing the channel to continue functioning and reserve its order. Okay? And if you're talking about what is this high court order? So if you're talking about this high court order, the court seems to have endorsed the government stand that it was a national security issue. And therefore, there was no need to observe the principles of natural justice. So here court, which is mainly looking into that petition and court mainly endorsed this government stand and said that it was a national security issue. So here there is no need to observe the principles of natural justice now and court also choose to accept the submission of documents by the government and these documents which are mainly submitted in a sealed cover and agree with the authorities that there was intelligence report that warranted the denial of security clearance. 
okay it came with intelligence report and this report mainly warranted the denial of security clearance and if you are talking about what is the inference from this high court decision the court decision goes against emerging jurisprudence that any restrictions on fundamental rights must not only be the reasonable but also witness the test of proportionality as well so actually you know that fundamental rights which are enshrined in part 3 of our indian constitution they are not absolute right they are not absolute they, we can see there will be some reasonable restrictions can be imposed on those fundamental rights so now court decision which mainly goes against emerging jurisprudence that any restrictions on fundamental rights but not only on the reasonable grounds but also withstand the test of proportionality here and this broadcasting which mainly involves the interconnected rights for example right of a freedom for media and freedom to disseminate information and freedom to consume information so all these will comes under article 19 of indian constitution which mainly talks about freedom of speech and expression and the court verdict has negated not only the channel's right to broadcast but also even viewers right to know the information so if we are talking about powers of information and broadcasting ministry is the power is there for this iib mail to cancel this yes of course so now let us try to see some important acts under which the powers of this iib and b ministry will be there so if we are talking about powers of this information broadcasting ministry so the so this ministry which have the power to regulate content okay it have the power to regulate the content and the ministry which may release on inputs from other ministries and even it will release on this intelligence agencies in information as well so if we are talking about different sectors for which there is regulation which is mainly done by this inb ministry is tv channels will be there print media like newspaper magazines and even movies in theaters and movies on tv radio they will all comes under this regulation of this inb ministry and recently in 2021 february so there was one important law that is information technology intermediary guidelines and digital media ethics code rules 2021 so under this act what happened it extended the regulatory powers of inb even to this uh, ott platforms for example netflix amazon prime and as well as hotstar etc and if you are talking about especially tv channel because this case it is regarding this tv channel so the ministry has electronic media monitoring cell and this cell which mainly tracks any violations or done by any tv channel or not and where the rules are present and the rules are present in this cable tv network rules of 1994 if there is any violation then there will be the cancellation of this license which mainly seen right so this is to the tv channels and whenever there is any violation is happening under this cable tv network rules of 1994 and this violation that will also leads to revocation of channels uplinking license and even downlinking license so if we are talking about uplinking license it is mainly regarding the satellite and downlinking license it is regarding broadcasting to the viewers and if you are talking if there is any grievance or if there is any concerns from the tv channel side so where they can file their complaints so there is a three level or three tier grievance redressal structure is there first one is channel they need to go for self regulation and we are also having self regulatory body of industry and finally we have this i and b ministry okay there viewers can raise their concerns so what kind of content is not allowed so how can we know so which kind of content which is not allowed so for example is there any law no so there is no specific law or we can say no specific act which mainly says about which or which content is allowed and which content is prohibited especially in the print media electronic media ott platforms etc so what happen so there is article 19 sub class 1 of indian constitution which mainly talks about freedom of speech and expression and under this article 19 sub class 1 there are some reasonable restrictions will be imposed and those reasonable restrictions are first one is the whenever the content which is related to security of state that can be prohibited and if the content which is affecting the friend relationship with other countries that can be prohibited and even whenever country which is try to change the public order decency morality so these are some reasonable restrictions under this article 19 1 of indian constitution
So what is a way forward? So even though court recognizes the scope of judicial review in this matters of this national security is very limited. So especially in the case of national security, so the scope for judicial review it is very much limited. So in this context also, even we need to go for disclosing of details. And next one is, so if the practice of using confidential intelligence claim is happening to revoke the permission, which is given to this uh, channel to operate encouraged freedom of media will be at a great danger. So here whenever we are going for cancelling of license here, so whatever the fundamental right that is freedom of press is also one important subclass right. So this will be comes in danger. So we need to revoke the permission okay and we need to encourage these channels okay and they need to follow the what are the reasonable distance are there that should not be breached by this TV channels. Now let us try to say next topic it is regarding working women too with a dream of good health care. So I can say this article is talking about women and child care okay so it is talking about good child care and women. So what happened we can talk about informal workers and as well as formal workers here. So this article it is very much important from GS paper to under society because women also become part of our integral society. Right. So this article it is important from our GS paper too and you can get this type of questions in your mains and even normally interviews will be conducted in this March time. So if you are if you are having interview on this March 8th, so for sure you will be getting questions uh, from this International Women's Day and what is your opinion regarding this gender equality, gender parity like that. So now let us try to see this article in a very great detail. So as you all know every year March 8th we celebrate as International Women's Day and this year theme okay this year theme is gender equality today for sustainable tomorrow and the theme it is very clear it says about gender equality gender equality it is necessary today such that we can see sustainable okay we can see sustainable development tomorrow so if you are talking about gender equality so gender equality in india it is far cry for female informal workforce and even world economic forum and united nation development program so the reports of this wef which mainly says that our generation and even our children generation they are not going to see gender parity so if we want to see gender parity it will take time like one century so this is the report which is given by this world economic forum and even united nation development program report uh, which mainly conducted survey in 80 countries and this report which mainly highlights that about 90 percent of men they will be showing discrimination against women for example based on religion based on uh, language based on culture based on rituals tradition and even the place where they are coming from and not only this but there are thousand reasons are there where men are showing discrimination or bias against women so these are the reports of this wef and as well as united nations development program and if you see data even ilo that is international labor organization also came up with study in this 2018 it mainly says that more than 95 percentage of indian working women they are informal workers and they mainly work in labor intensive and even they mainly work in low paying and highly precarious jobs are in highly highly difficult conditions and they do not have even social protection as well and even if you are talking about world health organization so world health organization which mainly released a bulletin and this bulletin which mainly says women informal work in central to the feminization of poverty okay women who are working in this informal organizations so it is one of the important reason for this feminization of poverty so if you are talking about India especially, so India it is a working very much good in providing some maternal benefits for women. So here India which is mainly, uh, mainly in the top list, okay, global top 3 which is mainly providing in maternal health benefits and as well as statutory maternity for the women. But if you are talking about uh, what, what is the law under the stat, uh, statutory maternity leave. So we have the maternity benefit amendment act of 2017 and under this act which mainly provides a paid maternity leave for women employees to 26 weeks and under this act it also provides an option to work from home 
and even there will be like a mutual agreement with the employer and they will be also providing some creech facilities so creech facilities are nothing but there will be separate rooms will be there where women they can go for breastfeeding and they can attend if there is an emergency as well right so this is some statutory statutory maternity maternity benefits which are mainly provided for the women okay at the workplaces but these benefits are enjoyed only by the formal sector so women who work in the formal sector they can enjoy this benefit okay but if you see how much amount of women they are working in this formal sector that is only 5 percentage and rest 95 percentage of women workforce they will be working in this informal sector so they are not going to get benefits under this statutory health benefits which are mainly provided by the government under this under this maternity benefit act of 2017 and even one more study by this international labor organization in 2006 which mainly pointed that there is lack of access to quality childcare services right and because of this women they are leaving this labor force and because whenever women are leaving this labor force they do not have proper income and they are exposing themselves to the discriminatory employment practices as well so because of this no proper income and low proper livelihood that will leads to some negative impact on the health risk for the women and if you're talking about what is the way forward there are three ways that can help helps women to take care okay to take a more productive paid work and even to improve their maternal and child care conditions so what are those three options which are available so first one is there is a need of extending integrated child development services that is icds second one is we need to revitalize the screech schemes and third one is improving of maternity benefit so if we're talking about expansion of this icds so primarily this icds will be provided by this anganwadi centers right so primary mandate of this anganwadi centers under this icds is they will provide some maternal and as well as child nutritional security so whenever any pregnant woman who is registering under this anganwadi they are going to get milk eggs and as well as some protein powder and even some cases anganwadi centers they will be also providing some medicines like uh, iron supplements folic acid supplements and some multivitamin tablets for this woman who are especially pregnant right and after the delivery also they will be giving some good quality uh, eggs and as well as a uh, good quality food will be will be provided by this angan wardes for this lactating woman as well so in this way they will be focusing on this maternal and as well as child nutritional security and they will be also focusing on clean and safe environment and they will be focusing on early childhood education so we are going to send our children for this anganwadi centers right and they will be getting some eggs and as well as they will be getting some protein powder that will be given in anganwadi centers and even they will be learning some basic alphabets and numeracy in this anganwadi centers right but there are some challenges in this anganwadi centers because they do not take care of this child entire day but what happen they will be offering this services for just few hours a day and next one is they will be not uh, take caring of children who are under age of 3 years and whenever we are sending our children to anganwadi centers so it is very much inconvenient for working women who is working in informal sector to send children and to pick up the children during the work hours and even for this uh, pregnant women and as well as lactating women so taking home ration is also very much difficult with their young children okay and in this context what can be done so we can go for increasing of time that can be spent by the children in this anganwadi centers such that it will be very much helpful for the mother to go to work and next one is uh, we need to we need to also allow mother time for paid work and as well as coverage with this national education policy so whenever children who are mainly intaking uh, for example if there is any anganwadi center is there so whenever anganwadi center they are mainly taking care of children who are below this 3 years of age means that will be helpful for the mother 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 will be getting time to go for paid work and even that will be helpful for incorporating of education in this children at early age under this national education policy as well right and second option we have is revitalizing of this screech scheme so here we are having this national screech scheme under this scheme it mainly provides some specific provisions that should be present at a workplace 
right but these creed schemes do not have proper government funding so we need to increase the funding for these creed schemes and we can also come up with some inclusive approach okay and we need to diversify work site and even working hours etc and at the public places wherever the work is happening so there we need to come up with a network of this creed such that it will be very very beneficial for the women to attend breastfeeding and as well as to attend some emergencies and if you're talking about third one that is some maternal benefits so whenever if you're talking about child birth and as well as child care so it is a financially very much burden for the family especially below poverty family or like lower middle class family etc because she 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 will not go to work at least a few weeks before the child birth right so women are mostly working in this informal employment because of that they are not going to get this maternity benefits as well right but as of now there is a national food security act of 2013 which mainly entitles pregnant and lactating women they will get a cash transfer of for at least rupees 6000 rupees and even there is one more scheme that is pradhan mantri matru vandana yojana so under this here after the birth they will be getting rupees 5000 rupees okay and not only this but even some states they are having some maternity benefit schemes to specific to the states for example tamil nadu we have muthu lakshmi maternity benefit scheme in rajasthan we have indira gandhi maternity nutrition scheme in odisha we have mamta scheme gujarat we have kasturba poshan sahay yojana in chatisgarh we have this kaushalya maternity scheme and we need to try to cover the gap in these and we need to go for incentivizing health seeking behaviors as well so whatever the cash transfer which is seen under this scheme it is a very very insufficient and even the amount which is very much less than compared to that of this minimum wages as well and even sometimes we can see postponement in the releasing of money as well right and even there is a lack of affordable and quality child care services that we can see and maternity benefits which mainly increases the burden on this informal women workers such that it mainly aggravates the gender and as well as class inequalities so as you all know so this year theme is gender equality so mainly to ensure this gender equality we need to ensure affordable and quality healthcare infrastructure and we need to focus on employment linked benefit it is a very much helpful for decreasing of gender discrimination and will be helpful for achieving of gender equality and even campaign theme theme of this 2022 is break the bias so to un- to mainly break the bias we can come up with this steps such that we can ensure there is gender parity it which is there in our society right and now let's try to see next topic it is regarding terror in peshawar so this article is talking about gs paper to under international relations so now to understand this you need to know the basic thing so if you are a muslim you might be knowing about in muslims we are having a two sects first one is shia sect and as well as sunni sect so actually uh, actually we will be having like a controversy between this shia and as well as sunnis so always there will be like some fighting situation that can be seen between this shia and the sunnis so in some areas we can see shia will be minority and sunni will be majority and in some areas we are having shia will be majority and sunni will be minority so here we can say like Shin, uh, sunni majority countries are there and shia majority countries are there so between this sunni uh, majority countries and shia majority countries there will be always we can see war like situation that may be seen right so this article which is also regarding this as shia sunni sectorian war so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so what happened recently recently in peshawar so this peshawar which is located in pakistan so in this peshawar a suicide attack that mainly uh, at, happened in this shia mosque okay suicide attack at shia mosque in peshawar that had and because of the suicide bomb attack that led to killing of 62 people here so it is one of the grave reminder of pakistan's growing security challenges after the taliban returned to the power in afghanistan so now actually you know that in 2000 okay actually what happened in 2021 uh, in the last year so taliban which con- which mainly uh, which mainly hand which mainly uh, taliban uh, afghanistan which is under control of taliban 
so whatever the ashraf ghani government is present at that time so what happened because of this taliban attack and taliban came and occupied this kabul and now we can see taliban based government that is running in this afghanistan right so after this taliban which mainly returned into power in afghanistan that started posing of security issue for number of countries which are mainly sharing boundary with this afghanistan and at present in this afghanistan pakistan region so what happened shia minority people they are in a grave risk right so it is one of the deadliest attack that mainly seen in pakistan since 2018 bombing of quetta so in quetta in 2018 in pakistan there was one attack happened in that attack uh, about 149 people they lost their life so after this deadliest attack now we can see this peshawar attack it is a suicide attack which mainly happened and that led to loss of 62 people in this uh, mosque so if you are talking about this islamic state terrorist organization which was mainly carried out the number of suicide attacks in afghanistan so whenever this taliban which mainly occupied or captured this uh, kabul since 2021 august so since then this islamic state which is mainly one terrorist organization so it is mainly carrying out a number of suicide attacks now what happened the same thing which is happening in this iraq and as well as syria so in iraq and syria ISIS okay IS that is a Islamic state which has carried out systematic attacks against Shias so in the same way this type of attacks are now seen in this Pakistan as well so in Afghanistan we have this IS Khorasan okay so this IS Khorasan which mainly targeted religious minorities for example Shias and Sikhs and they are doing suicide bomb attacks in against the Shias and as well as six year and this peshawar attack which mainly suggested that is threat is now spreading across the porous border to pakistan so because of this attack now it is mainly suggesting that is threat that is islamic state threat which is mainly spreading to the porous border to the pakistan so wherever afghanistan which is mainly having the boundary with the pakistan there will be some type of porous borders so in this porous borders so there will be the easily movement of people is happening so through this easy movement of people we can see terrorists are mainly moving from one area to another area and they are conducting this suicide bomb attacks and shias who mainly make up about 20 percentage of pakistan population they are now mainly facing this sectarian violence okay they are now facing the sectarian violence by this extremist group and if you are talking about sunni groups to are present they are ahl hi sunnat wal jamaat and as well as tareeke labik pakistan so these are two sunni groups which are mainly present and they are mainly forefront they are mainly spreading this anti shia campaign in the country and even if you are talking about in india in punjab okay sorry uh, sorry what happened in 2020 july punjab assembly which mainly passed a bill so that bill is tahafullah hi buyan e islam so this punjab which is present in not in india but in pakistan so in pakistan punjab which mainly passed a bill that is tahafuz e buynat e islam so actually this law which is mainly supporting this sunni interpretation of islam okay so because of this type of laws which are passed in the states so these are the laws which are mainly used by this terror organizations and they are mainly exploiting this sectarian hostilities as well and they are conducting attacks on this shia mosque so what they want in pakistan and afghanistan it is same that is isis so here islamic state which is khorasan so now khorasan which mainly want the same which is happening in the iran iraq and as well as syria so they are mainly conducting this shia sunni sectarian civil war so as taliban they became the rulers of afghanistan here so is which mainly emerged as, emerged as an opposition party to this taliban okay so is which mainly emerged as a main armed opposition to the taliban and the taliban relationship which is present with this ttp that is pakistan taliban and also it makes security situation which is very much complicated for this pakistan now so now because of this peshawar attack we can see it is one of the warning sign for this pakistan like so jihadism which is mainly returning to pakistan right so now in this condition we need to take a proper step especially to control this this type of attacks because in already in iraq and syria so there are number of huge attacks which are happening and that will lead to like uh, public order disturbance and as well as law and order conditions that mainly appears so because of this mainly to address this issue so we need to take steps early 
right and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding rupee sinks to record low as oil prices spike so this article which is mainly talking about depreciation of rupee and as you all know because of this russia ukraine issue so now the price of this crude oil which mainly more than 130 dollar per barrel and it is like 130 to 140 dollar per barrel so earlier it used to be 50 to 70 dollar 70 dollar per barrel and now almost the price had been doubled so because of this what happened we can see there is a devaluation of indian rupee that mainly happened and now one dollar is equal to 77 rupees okay so tight context says that so the rupee sank to record low of almost 77 against us dollar as russia ukraine conflict sent crude oil prices soaring to 14 year high prompting safe haven flows into the dollar okay so now one dollar is equal to 77 rupees so if we're talking about details we need to know about depreciation so depreciation means nothing but the weakening of value of currency for example if you see one dollar is equal to 50 rupees let us take this is the some stable condition one dollar is called 50 rupees so when one dollar is equal to 45 rupees and another situation one dollar is equal to 77 rupees so if i have 77 rupees means it is equal to one dollar earlier if I have 50 50 rupees means i it is like equal to one dollar okay so here one dollar is called 45 rupees means there is appreciation which mainly happened that means the value of rupee which mainly increased and one dollar is equal to 77 rupees means so value of rupee which is mainly decreased so this condition is called as depreciation and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding poacher skill 11 black buck in andhra so here you need to know about some facts regarding this black buck so this article will be important regarding gs paper 3 under environment and ecology so if you see context it mainly says that poachers believed to be hailing from karnataka they killed 11 black buck in agriculture fields in andhra pradesh so in andhra pradesh poachers are coming from this karnataka and they killed 11 black buck in agriculture fields and after preliminary inquiry they found that so these animals are killed by using some sharp objects so if you see this is the image of black buck so if you see here indian black buck the scientific name is antelope cervicapra so it is an antelope and it is the only living species of genus antelope and it is considered as one of the fastest animal after this cheetah okay cheetah is the world fastest animal and after that this black buck it is the second fastest animal and if you're talking about horns of this black buck here in this image you can see they are spiral right so horns of this black buck are ringed with one or four spiral turns and normally female do not have any horns and if you're talking about habitat they mainly live in this grassy plains and even they can be found in a very slightly forested areas and they require a lot of amount of water and they prefer the areas where the water which is available throughout the year that is perennial water and normally they found in the western in central western india in MP, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Punjab, Haryana, Maharashtra and as well as Odisha. In southern India, we can see in Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and as well as Andhra Pradesh. And if you are talking about protection status, so hunting of this black bug, it is protected under Scheduled One of uh, Wildlife Protection Act. And this one is, they are mainly listed under least concern in our IUCN red list. And one important fact that you have to know is Bishnoi community. So, Bishnoi community of Rajasthan, they are very much known for conservation of these black bugs. And now let us try to see next topic. It is regarding elections to 13 Rajya Sabha seats on March 31st. Actually, this topic is important from our polity. And you need to know some basic facts regarding election process for this Rajya Sabha. So, context mainly says that Election Commission of India said the elections for this 13 Rajya Sabha seats which are mainly falling in vacant in six states, they should be held on 31st March. So what are the seats that are vacant in this Rajya Sabha? So we need to go for elections. So this is the thing which mainly said by Election Commission of India. So let me know for which elections, which is mainly conducted by Election Commission of India. So Election Commission of India will, will, will be conducted elections for which? Okay, which of the thing like president or vice president like that, you have to give me the list. And if you're talking about facts, if you're talking about which article which is talking about composition of house. So article 80 of Indian constitution, 
which mainly talks about the provisions for the members of Rajya Sabha. And currently there are 20, 245 members and it includes like 233 will be elected members and remaining 12 members will be nominated. And these nominated persons will be nominated by President of India who are mainly having some exclusive knowledge okay in the field of art literature science and social service and you have to remember these four things sports is not there and you might be having a doubt like why how this sachin who got this Rajya Sabha seat so sachin got this Rajya Sabha seat under this art but not sports and if you're talking about tenure of members every Rajya Sabha mp has a tenure of six years and for every two years one third of seats which are mainly Okay, one third of the seats, they will be, uh, okay, so what happened, the elections will be conducted for every uh, two years, the one third of the members will be held every two years. So, if you are talking about Rajya Sabha MPs, they had tenure of six years and elections, especially to this one third of seats that will be held every two years. And if you are talking about process of elections, so it, is, it will be not by the direct elections, it, the elections will be conducted in direct way right indirect way means that will be conducted that will be by ml as members of legislative assemblies and this elections will be done through proportional representation system and we will be having a single transferable vote system here so this is about this topic and now let us move on to next topic title says labor ministry launches donate a pension scheme so here we need to focus on what is this donate a pension scheme so whenever any scheme which is seen in news, that will be very important for your prelims. And now this topic will be important from your GS paper too, under schemes, policies and programs of government. So if you see context, it mainly says that Union Labor and Employment Ministry launched a donate a pension scheme, which mainly allows any citizen to pay a premium amount on behalf of an unorganized worker under this Pradhan Mantri Shram Yogi Mandan scheme. So under this Pradhan Mantri Shram Yogi Mandan scheme, so any citizen, he is now allowed to pay premium amount on behalf of an unorganized worker. So if we are talking about details, so actually this pension scheme, which is mainly launched in 2019, and it mainly allows here this unorganized sector workers who are between the age of 18 to 40 years, and they can earn up to like rupees 15,000 month. And they can pay a premium amount of like 55 to 200 per month and this will be dependent on the age. So whenever you are enrolling at 18 years, the premium will be very much low. And whenever you are enrolling at a old age, then the premium will be high. So after reaching age of 60, that means after 20 years, you are going to get like amount rupees 3000 monthly pension. And as of March 3, the scheme had 46.34 lakh enrollments under this ministry okay ministry portal and if you're talking about what will be the benefits so here is instead of that person any person now can pay this a premium amount and what happened so this will be providing some immediate uh, support for the staff like domestic workers drivers helpers caregivers nurses and even household workers establishment etc here and this contribution for a minimum of one year with an amount which is ranging like 660 to 2400 per year depending on the age of the beneficiary and even this premium amount that can be paid through this mandan dot in and it is a one of the common service center that can be done by any person who present anywhere in the country so this is about this topic and now let us try to see yesterday's question the first one is in british india what is this dastak actually you know that this dastak is nothing but a permitting license Okay, so it is a permit exempting the European traders, mostly of this British East India Company from paying customs or transit duties. And second question is regarding Maratha and Mughal empires. So revenue system of Marathas was progressive, unlike Mughals who were mainly interested in raising revenues from the helpless peasantry. And Maratha failed to give sound administration to people outside Maharashtra while Mughals were more successful in effective administration. Actually, you know that this Mughal administration which mainly started here and mainly spread throughout the country almost, right? And this statement is absolutely correct. But even Marathas also mainly focused on raising revenues from this helpless pleasantry as like this Mughals. So this statement is incorrect. So correct option will be only two. So you can see the explanation part here. 
and today's question the first question is regarding mahalwar system so i think if you have gone through this permanent land settlement system we have mahalwar system raitwar system and as well as jamindar system so this question is regarding this mahalwar system so try to read these two statements and try to give me the correct answer and next question it is regarding consider the following statements regarding india's trade state of trade affairs in 18th century so try to read the statements and give me the correct option okay so these are the today's questions so before concluding and before showing the today's hindu newspaper pdf so i want to make a small announcement so we in rathod sais launched this mains answer writing program and this march batch had been started and the registrations will be closed by march 10th so this course it is very very useful okay and here we will provide you weekly targets of subject that you have to complete and we will give you detailed micro listing of topics and one question every day and on sunday there will be essay or case study there will be evaluation and we provide you one to one mentorship so these are the exclusive benefits of this mains answer writing practice course so please join this course it will be absolutely useful and apart from that we also launched this pen drive courses for entire foundation course for 2023 it will be exclusively beneficial for the beginners because we are we are mainly teaching from the basic things so if you are preparing from zero level also so we ensure you concept clarity will be there okay and now let us try to see the today's pdf of hindu and the today's pdf is march 8th okay so this is march 8th 2022 delhi edition so first page you can see want mother name on palm and run around is on the cards so actually this person okay this person applied for this palm number of times and in that palm card it is mainly asking the father name so if you have this permanent account number card you can see your name will be there and your father name will be there so he do not have actually father he is from a single parent and he want his mother name to be present from on this certificate and as well as palm card and finally he got that okay so this is regarding this article and here i already discussed this topic regarding this rupee shrink that is depreciation and if you move forward leave the city page it will be like local news and if you come to the state newspaper so here i found this uh, black buck article i discussed that and if you see in the state newspaper i saw rajasthan to boost public hearing system in villages so actually this article which is mainly talking about one important bill that is going to be passed in this rajasthan so this bill which is mainly focusing on transparency and social accountability bill it is mainly focusing to strengthen the public hearing system in the village panchayats okay so this article is also very important and if you are writing about any question regarding this redressal of grievances in your governors you can talk about this rajasthan bill to boost this public hearing systems right and if you move forward this is our editorial page i discussed three article from this page and there is one article regarding this nsc that is national stock exchange co location scam so already we discussed that topic so you can revise that topic easily and if you come to this open page here you can see the potential of female workforce now in this zig platform and care economy so the fresh employment opportunities are there for women okay so you can easily read this and you can understand this so this will be helpful for your women empowerment right and if you go to further this eighth paper okay eighth paper so here you can see china calls for ties to move forward so as it is mainly talking about uh, partners partners will be helpful for mutual success rather than advisory so this is the thing which mainly said by foreign minister of china so you can easily understand this and next topic it is uh, regarding elections to 13 rajya sabha seats i already discussed this topic and if you see further and in this news page you can see one important article regarding plan to bring 4 lakh girls back to school actually this topic it is very important from your society point of view actually what happened now center which is launching uh, okay launching a campaign that is back to school campaign so under which here anganwadi they mainly shifted their focus from 11 to 14 years to 14 to 18 years age group so under this new saksham anganwadi scheme which mainly comes under women and child development ministry here the girls who are from 11 to 14 years they are mainly leaving their focus here and they are mainly shifting their focus to 14 to 18 year old uh, old girls who have lost who have mainly dropped out from their schools actually this campaign that is back to school campaign which mainly focus 
on uh, this uh, dropout uh, girls and they need to rejoin the schools so this is about this and for this anganwadi workers will be given some additional incentives and this will be like from 500 rupees to 1000 rupees for the counseling of adolescent dropout and i discussed about this donate a pension scheme right and if you go further in this world page you can see china says us it is trying to build india indo pacific nato so here you need to know about what is this nato and what is indo pacific region we already discussed this topic number of times and if you move forward in this business page there are many articles which are important so first one is oil nickel sore on rails or on fears of supply chaos so what happened because of this ongoing russia ukraine issue so there is some crisis that we can see and there is increasing of price of this crude oil that is like dollar 140 per barrel and because of this it will be having some negative impact and even russia it is very much important for this nickel and as well as palladium metals so because of this uh, russia ukraine crisis we can see there is decreasing of export from these countries and that will affect the almost all the global economies which are mainly dependent on this russia and next one is sensex plunges 2.74 percentage as crude oil price surges so there is increasing of crude oil price that is mainly seen so because of this there is some impact that is seen and next one is china export growth slows ukraine crisis poses a risk so what happened due to this russia ukraine crisis the exports of this china is also affected and next one is export of processed agri food rice 23 percentage and actually you know that india which is mainly focusing on this food processing and even recent budget which mainly focused on increasing of spending in this food processing and this article says that exports of this processed agri food which mainly rise so it is a one of the important positive impact that can be seen because of increasing spending in this food processing units right and even we came up with a mega food park scheme as well so because of this there is increasing of manufacturing of processed foods and that led to finally increasing of exports so this is about this topic and these are some important articles that appear in today's hindu newspaper so i discussed important editorials important articles and even i showed you the today's hindu pdf as well so by this i am concluding i hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to rathor's is academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos and if you want to talk to me you can call on this number 8074765513 and the details of the courses that we are offering in this Rathod's IIS they are present in our Rathod's IIS Academy website so please visit there try to register there and you can watch the demo videos of courses that we are offering thank you so much